morning. This is Michael Nelson with TLC Tech. Uh, welcome to today's webinar on Microsoft Planner. And then in just a second, I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so I've got that you can hear me. Thank you very much. All righty. So again, welcome to Microsoft Planner. Uh, we're going to go over uh, the, the basics and kind of dig into Planner, how you can work with it, also how you can integrate it into Microsoft Teams, into SharePoint, and how you can use it as just a standalone uh, standalone application. So let me start with uh, Planner is for your teams, not Teams the application, but for your employees, your teams inside of your organization, what tasks and to-dos are for you. So for those of you like me that use tasks in Outlook, tasks are individual. Planner is meant for tasks that are shared amongst many. And you're going to start seeing kind of a, a theme here in we have OneDrive is meant for one person, SharePoint is meant for data that's going to be shared with others. Uh, tasks and to-dos, which is a few, uh, the, the next webinar that I'm doing, is for individuals, whereas Planner is tasks and to-dos for your group organization. Uh, so you're going to start kind of seeing those kind of behaviors in some of the Microsoft 365 products, that some are for individuals, some are for teams. So that's kind of the beginning point. And the other thing that I'll tell you is that T uh, planner can be used, like I said, amongst, it can be built inside of a Teams website, like I've done here, and I'm going to walk you through how I did that. You can also get to planner from your Microsoft uh, Office 365 page, just going into planner. And at this point, I can see all of the plans that I'm involved with. We'll get back to that in a little while. Um, but for right now, we're just going to start with how Planner works in general. So Planner is made up of buckets and tasks. It's very, very simple. I've been reading uh, different blogs about Planner over the past few weeks getting ready for this, and some people were complaining that it should be a lot more granular. You should be able to do a lot more things. One of the things that Microsoft wanted to do with Planner is they wanted to keep it really basic and really simple to use. And, and that's what I hope to be able to show you today. So uh, one caveat I will give you is there's lots of different ways that you can create a plan. You can go into the Planner Hub you can create a new plan here. Just give it a name, kind of like creating a new team, creating a new uh, team site, um, whatnot. That is a standalone plan in Planner. Now, the caveat that I'm going to give you is if you're going to use a plan inside of a team channel, build it inside of Teams because the permissions are completely related to that Teams site. And if you build, I, I made a mistake early on building a plan that I was later going to integrate into SharePoint, or sorry, into one of my team's channels. But the permissions, the way permissions are done on the back end made it really wonky. So if you're going to use Planner inside of Teams, start it and build it from inside of your team's channel. Now, I created this one, and we'll jump back to this in a second. I'll go ahead and create a new one in our sales presentation. So let's say this is something Jack and I use. Um, if we're going to do it right here, you remember, hopefully, from the previous Teams and get Teams trainings, we've got the files that we could do. We've got the wiki, which I don't even want to use. But in here, I can do add a tab. I'm going to say I want to add planner. Now, if I had already created a plan inside of this channel, I could use that, or sorry, use an existing, but I'm going to create a new plan and I'm going to call this sales planner. Now, I just save that. It's that easy. Um, it'll post to the channel saying, hey, there's been a new one created. And you notice the very first thing is I now have a planner. I've got board, chart, schedule. We'll go through all of that. I've got to do, and then I've got to add a new bucket. This is what's known as a bucket. So you can see in the ellipses here, I can rename it or I can delete that bucket. 
I'm going to go ahead and choose rename on disks. And instead of to do's, uh, I'm going to say current. I'll add a new bucket here, call that um, past, and then create a new bucket, call that future. So I've got the buckets that I created. Now I can create tasks or to do's inside of each bucket. So I can do a current task and let's. Um, call someone. Okay, I'm going to give it a due date. Let's say I need to do that tomorrow and I'm going to assign it to myself. Bam. Once I've chosen those, add the task. Now, it's a very simple, this is what's called as a task card. Uh, let's say that, and, and I'll show this as well when we move into the other one, um, I just wanted to show you the ease of how easy it is to create a plan and how to create buckets inside so again, we've got the plan, which is the first thing you create, and then we've got the buckets, these show up at the top, and then we've got the tasks inside of the bucket. Now I can also move this task from bucket to bucket, and that changes, it, it's just literally that simple drag and drop. I'll show you another way that you can change that as well. So again, the whole part of Planner is that it is built around buckets, and tasks. Those are the two core things that, those are the two four core fundamentals about Microsoft Planner. Again, a reminder because everybody is muted on this. If you have any questions, pop it into the questions window. Jack usually watches those, but I've got those open on another screen. So pop questions in anytime that you want and I'll be able to see those. Um, so again, we've talked about moving tasks into different different buckets. Now I'm going to go into a the the show off that I created for this one. Again, I created it inside the channel webinar series. Remember each channel in Teams kind of can be its own standalone area that can have the same users or different users, but the other side of that is that you can create a planner for each channel. You'll notice here I named this one Sales Planner. On the webinar series, I called it Microsoft Tasks and To-Dos. So this is the planner I created for today's show off. Um, what I did in here is I did, okay, so this is going to be for planning the next webinar that's coming up. Uh, so pre-webinar, what do I need to do? And then post-webinar, what do I need to do? Create the agenda, send out invites, post it to the website. Afterwards, um, oh, I didn't fill that one out very well uh operational here and then send a thank you email on the post ones you'll notice that these all look a little bit different and i did that for a reason because this is what's known as a task card now you'll notice here it says operational communication marketing uh, there's also different names assigned and these are all the things that you can do inside of a task card. So I'm going to open up this first card. It was that I needed to create an agenda. Open up the card and it brings up kind of the sub menus that are available here. So this is the title. I can also modify the title uh, for webinar. Just This is live. Just click X and it'll update it. Open the card again, bam, I'm back. From here, I can assign it to a bucket. Now remember, I can drag it over this way. I can drag it to another bucket, I can move it back here, or once I've got the card open, I can also assign the bucket here, pre-webinar, post-webinar. I can also change the status from not started, in progress, or completed. I can change the priority, I can do a start date, and I can do the due date that shows up as well. I can also type a note in here. Um, you will notice, if you notice right here, See that little icon right there? It says has comments. You'll notice that there's a spot for notes and there's a spot for comments. Comments are just things that you are adding onto the task because again, this task may actually be assigned to multiple people. There might be sub steps to it and I may take the first step, Lisa may take the second and Jack may take the third. So once I did something and I assigned it, I might add in here, completed first part going to Lisa now 
and I would reassign this to Lisa, change the assignment and remove myself, and then I would hit, then I would close it up. Bam, now that's been assigned to Lisa, and she would take care of the next step. So the thing about notes is that it keeps all of them in place. Oh, I didn't hit send. <laughs> um, finished, nothing like doing that live to make the mistakes so you learn from my mistakes. Finished first step, moving to Lisa and send that. Now that's posted it. It'll also send a message to Lisa and she's been assigned to the task because I assigned her to the task if the communications are set up, it'll send her a note. By default, you get a note when you've been assigned a task. That can be turned on or off. There's lots of ways to configure that as well. So the comments are permanent. Once you have put a, a comment in, you cannot delete it. So keep that in mind. That's kind of a permanent process just to keep everything transparent. Anybody that works on the task card can add a comment, but it stays there forever. Now, notes are a little bit different. This is typically a description for um, give high level overview for review. So I add that in here, go ahead and close that up. And you'll notice it didn't change anything here, but if I wanted to, I could say show on the card, and now you'll notice that the note shows up on the card. So I've got the title, I've got the note, I've got the date that it's due. I I know that there's notes on the or comments on this card and it's been assigned to Lisa. So that's the first thing that you can do playing around. Now also if you notice we have what are called labels. Those are very simple to do as well. Click in here, you'll notice the labels show up automatically. I can just simply click change it to marketing. Uh, click on marketing and unclick the operational. Now it's in, it's only that. You'll also notice in here that I can do more than one label. So I can say, make it both operational and marketing. And I'll sh and that'll show up when we look at how we filter the views on here. So it can uh, be assigned to multiple people. It can have multiple labels. There's lots of ways to slice and dice this. Uh, you may ask, how did I get those labels? Those are very simple that you can just click in to the label. Uh, actually, you go into group by labels. You'll see the labels at top, and that's where it's easy to go in and change the name. So I have marketing, communication, operational, and let's say, um, I'll just mark this to dues. So now I've got four labels that I created. I'm gonna go back to my buckets. And so this one now has the four labels in here, so I've got to-dos, operational, and marketing. You'll see that the green maintained, once I changed the name, it just changed it on, on this bucket as well. Um, so any questions so far on that? Okay, I don't see any questions there so far. Again, pop in questions anytime you want. Okay, so we talked about the cards, uh, clicking in, so we can click into the task. Let me take you to this one. You'll notice that looks a little bit different in the fact that I have the main, but then there's also other topics, there's other to-dos in here. And the way that I did that is it's called checklists. So you have your main task up here, and then you can also do a checklist. Let me go back to a blank card, or actually, let me just start a new one. So I'll do it under post webinar, call this show off, uh, set the date for Saturday. I'll assign that to myself. Um, a quick thing here, when you do this, you think that you're there, you're not done yet, you have to click add task. That actually puts it in here now. Okay, so I'm gonna open up that card. It's in the bucket post webinar. It's not started. Let's go ahead and make this a important priority. I've got the start date. I'll just type here. So that's gonna be the notes. And now I can do a checklist. So let's say that for the show off, I needed to do um, action one, action two, action three. So what this can do is it can keep you, if you've got subtasks as part of a bigger task, it keeps you from creating lots and lots of different cards. Um, you may have a, 
mailer that you need to get out to a company that would be you need to write the letter, you need to create the, uh, the list who it's going to go to. So you've got four or five things that are all related to getting this mailer out. You can make those an action on the card. Now, the one caveat there is that you still get one due date. So if there are high level items, you may wanna make them each have their own card, their own task card, so that you can give it a particular date and assign it um, to one person. If you had four high level items that were gonna be done by different people, definitely create their own task cards for them that way. But this is a good way to, to if you've got three or four small sub things that you need to do in pursuit of this bigger to do task, and it's all gonna be done by the same person, you can create the checklist. Now I'm gonna close this one up and you notice it's not on there like it is here. All I have to do is again, click in here. You will notice though, this zero out of two, that lets you know that there are items on the checklist. Go back into the card and I can say show on the card. Do that and now I've got those three things on here. I can click on here and that just completed it. So if you notice, uncheck it, it's uncompleted. If I check it, it goes to completed. You can also move these up and down. So if something needed to be done, it was out of order. You can move that around. Um, let me see, pull that up. Oh, that actually, sorry, that actually broke it into its own card. Ah, there we are, sorry about that. Um, so go back into the show off. And again, the, the idea is that you can say show it on the card or not show it on the card. This is kind of a question about real estate. How much do you wanna see? Uh, do you want to dig into the task card to see that, or do you want to see it all in one glance? Um, again, the notes can show up on the card or not. Uh, let me see, so if I just close that up, now I've got the example here. Let me go back in, show that on the card as well. So now I've got the items. Action one was completed, so it's not going to show off. Um, you do see that I give up some real estate. So even though I said to show the notes on here and show on the card. So now you can see that I've got that, um, but it's not giving me, you notice that I've got an option here. I can either show the notes or I can show the checklist, but it's not letting me show both because of the real estate involved. Otherwise you would, your view would get too far out of whack and you wouldn't be able to see things. So you can choose one or the other, but it doesn't mean that anything goes away. So you can still see everything. Let's go ahead and show the notes. Uh, so you, I see the notes, I see the due date. It's important, it's assigned to me, and I know I have two uncompleted checklist items on this card. Uh, the other thing that you can do on a card is you can attach an item. So from here, you just go to attach an item. You can do a link. You can choose a file, and then it'll navigate into your normal spot like you're used to. That gives you access to your whole desktop. You can add an attachment, say, from SharePoint. It's going to pull up the document library that you're in. Um, Claire, I'll get you to that in just a second. Um, you can So you can attach it from... These are the documents that are inside of my sales and marketing. So again, if you wanted to attach a, if you want to attach something that was in a, a another SharePoint site, I would go file, and then I would navigate to your SharePoint sites. Uh, you know, this is our, I've gone through this before. This is our internal SharePoint. So I could go into any one of these and attach this, say open. And now that's attached the document here. I can also show this on the card. And when I do that, you'll notice that it actually shows now a picture of, it, it's, it's an icon of what is on that document. I've got the name, I've got the attachment, it's important, the due date, there's an attachment. You notice that that just showed up. So if I said, don't show that on the card, I would still be able to see the name, the importance, the date that it's due, there is an attachment and I've got two um, 
to sub item checklists on here and it's assigned to me. So Claire, you had asked, can you create a task template? Um, honestly, let me take that offline with you to go a little a little bit deeper. You can create a project, uh, you can create a planner template, but from my knowledge, you cannot create a task template, a, a template for the task, but I will do a little bit more research and validate that for you. Uh, let me just put a note here. Okay, so we've gone through the cards. Any questions on the cards so far? So again, you can create the task this way, click the task, you can do it. It's always gonna have, when you do it, it'll create, you notice that it doesn't save it. It just clicks it in whatever we're doing. Um, so I can create the task. I can, uh, you have to give it a task name at a bare minimum, you have to give it a task name and you can add the task there. So if you notice that one, it's bare bones. There's no information done about this one yet, but to create a task, it has to have a name. Then you can go in and do all the stuff here. So change it to whatever bucket, started, priority. You can do who it's assigned to, um, assign up here. I'll give that one to Lisa. Um, if I wanted to do that, add attachments, add comments. You do see that it created the comment that I created the task. So at this point, and again, I'll go ahead and give it uh, a, a label there and then I'm gonna go ahead and close it up. Now, let's say that you create something accidentally like I didn't want that one. We've got the ellipses here. I can label it, I can assign it, I can copy the task, I can move it. Again, it's easier just to drag and drop or I can completely delete the task. That makes it go away and that's deleted, deleted. So if you make a mistake, it's easy to go ahead and delete it there. So that's the part about working with cards, task cards inside Planner. Any questions so far on that? Okay, I'm gonna move on then to viewing the progress of a plan. So I'm gonna flip over now to, let me go ahead and close up a couple of things. I'm gonna go to my Microsoft Home. So again, this is the Office 365 splash screen. And if you remember in here, I've got webinar series. That's the name of uh, that's the name of the channel right here. It's called Microsoft Tasks and To Dos. That's the name of my planner. So I'm going to go over to here, click Planner, and that launches my Planner Hub. You'll notice right here, I've got my Microsoft Tasks and To Dos. Looks very familiar. And if actually, let's go ahead, I'm gonna do this side by side just to make this a little bit easier. And bring that up here. Teams go into my webinar series and go to task and to do. So here's my inside, this is embedded inside of Teams. And I've got it, so if you notice pre-webinar, post-webinar, it's the same over here, website, Teams, it's the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and add that task back. Add it, and in just a second, you'll see here, click over to this one, and it showed up. So that took about, what, five, six seconds? It's because again, these are the same area, it's the same thing, we're just looking at it from two different areas. We can get to it through Teams, or we can get to it through the planner website. Now I can go in here, I can again assign it to somebody, so I can assign this one, we'll go back and assign that one to Lisa. I can type a note here, I can add an attachment. As you notice, as, as I'm doing it, it's actually showing it up in real time. Close that up, and then just a second, it's gonna update. We see that Lisa was there. Uh, oh, I notes here, I'm gonna show on the card. So if I do that in just a second, it's gonna show up on the card over here. There it is. So these things work in real time. I can uh, reference you back to, this is very much like email. Um, you can get to email from Outlook. You can do, get to it from your phone. You can get to it from web-based. Same thing again, once it goes inside of the Office 365 ecosystem, be that in Teams, be that in SharePoint, or be that in the Planner Hub, it's all accessing it ultimately and saving it up to this planner hub. 
Uh, let me see. Okay, so let me go full screen back over here so that we get the full picture of it. So now I've got the different meetings. So a lot of you know that we do EOS in our company. That's the Entrepreneurial Operating System. We do all of our weekly L10 meetings. I'm just going to click very quickly. You'll see we have tasks, agenda, rocks, and whatnot. I'm going to stay out of that because there's uh, public or, or private information in there. This is my planner. I just kind of did this as a playing around with this. Uh, getting ready for this webinar. And then I've got the Microsoft Tasks and To-Dos. <coughs> That's the one that we've been working on through, um, through the Teams website. Now, these are my favorites. So I can access, these are all of the plans that I have access to. So there's the sales and marketing plan. There's the sales planner. Uh, this has been, I've been creating a lot of these just to kind of play around and show up. Uh, we've got TBR tickets. That was something that Brett had created. We're not using a lot of these. The ones that I really use are up here. So you can take something and make it a favorite just by clicking on here and then clicking the favorite star up here. That automatically adds it up to the favorites. That's what I did with the to-dos. If I uncheck that favorite, it takes it off my favorites list. Again, clicking puts it on here. So I can click in and see all of my plans. Now, a lot of you are like, well, that's great, but if I'm across multiple plans, I don't wanna have to go look at all of these different places all at the same to see everything that I have to do. And that's the beauty about this planner hub is that I can go to the hub and see every single plan in a glance. These are my favorite plans. I know that there's 37 tasks left on here. I can see how many are not started, in progress, how many are late, how many are completed. I can see this for every single plan that is on my favorite. And then I can see all the plans. So if I clicked into, um, I don't think we've used this one in a long time. I can click in here and I can see all of the plans, all, all of the tasks for that. So again, I can get to the planner hub that shows me every plan I have access to. The place I work out of is my tasks. So this tells me the ones I've completed. This also tells me the ones that I have not started. Now, if you notice, one of the things that you're gonna see, Microsoft tasks and to-do, sales planner, Microsoft's tasks and to-dos, communication under Microsoft tasks and to-dos. So this is pulling in all of my tasks against all of the plans that I have access to or that I have tasks that have been assigned to me. Does that make sense? Any questions on viewing my tasks and how it goes against how it'll show you across all of the different plans that you've been involved in? Okay, no questions so far. So let me keep going. So uh, let me see, I'm going to go into I'm gonna go back to the Microsoft tasks and to-dos. So right here, I have my buckets, pre-webinar, post-webinar. Um, so I can go into my charts. Now, this is just for my Microsoft tasks and to-dos. This is just for this one plan, but I can go into charts and it gives me a really easy way to see everything at a glance. I know how many tasks, how many are in progress, how many have not been started, how many are late and how many are completed. I also know what buckets they've been assigned to. I know the priorities, and I know how many members have been had tasks assigned by, by member. So I've got one task that's unassigned in here. I can click into that, I can find the task. Uh, go back, I would go back in to my board, find the, uh, let me see, what did I do? Oh, it's group by bucket. Assigned to, I've got a filter turned on here. Clear my filter out and show it by bucket. And it's the action three. I know it's not assigned because there's nobody in here. I can click on the three ellipses and choose assign. Grab the person this way. Or again, I could have clicked in and grab the person from there. So the again, like everything else, there's multiple different ways to be able to get somebody to be able to do something on a task. So I'm gonna go back to the charts. Now you see I have nobody unassigned. If you're trying to balance out a project, 
that has multiple tasks, this is a really good way to be able to see if you're being a little too heavy on one particular person. Um, also, then you can go in, find the late in progress, find out what's happening there, uh, make sure that your people are on top of things that way. I can also go into the schedule and see where they're actually scheduled. So show off was on the 25th. I'm gonna go ahead and move that to the 28th. I'll go back to here, show off, and you notice that it automatically updated it to, to the 28th. So if you've got to move, uh, you know, the best laid, uh, the, uh, the road, yeah, the best laid projects uh, can always go south on us. So if you've got to move things around in a schedule, this is a really easy way to do it. So I could just move everything up one day, pull it this way, and then move things around. I go back to my board. Now all of my dates have been changed. The, the assigned to, the labels, those all stay the same. So if you notice now, again, we've got buckets and we've got tasks. That's really the core feature, but there's lots of different ways that you can slice and dice this to get the different views to make sure that people are staying on top of what they need to be doing. So that's viewing the progress of a plan. Uh, my other ellipses are in here. I can see any conversations that have been happening. That takes me into a new window. That actually, there's a mailbox in here uh, that gets created. And uh, so most of you probably will not use that, but understand there is a communication built behind this. I can also go into the members that have access. I can see who the members are. I can add more members in this way as well. I know this is a private group. Here's my members. I can edit this. I can add members in this way. Click add a member and then you add a new person into the team, into the project, sorry, into the planner. Um, I can look at all the files. I can do notebooks assigned to this. I can see sites. Uh, I can open this inside of Microsoft Teams because it knows it was built inside of Microsoft Teams. There it is, it opened it up. Uh, again, there's my Teams, all I have to do is go to, so it took me to that particular channel inside of Teams. Uh, let me go back over. So again, always remember the three ellipses uh, if you needed to, I could remove this from the favorites. I can copy this plan. Claire, that's kind of the template. If you have a, um, this may be more what you were talking about, but uh, let's say for us, we have, um, if we were gonna use this for onboarding new partners, we've got 40 things that have to be done when we onboard a new partner. If we wanted a plan for each partner, we could create the, plan with all of the 40 different steps that are required, create that as a plan and then copy that plan. That could be kind of the master template. Then we could copy that. So clear if it were you guys, then we would copy that. And then the plan would be onboarding dash woodwork. So the way that you guys work with your clients, you might have that for each of like for the guys out in the field, that could be a possible way of doing this versus that database that we've been talking about. Uh, that might be one way to deal with it as well. You can export it to Excel. You can copy the link to the plan. So if you wanted to email somebody directly, now again, they're gonna to have to have permissions to be able to access the plan, but it's an easy way to get them into it. So this is, again, my tasks. I can see everything. And again, I can do charts for my tasks. Again, this shows me how many I have left, how many are started, not started, in progress, completed. I can see what plans they're tied to, and then I have all of my tasks over here to the right. I can also look at how that shows up on my schedule. I can drag them and drop them around that way. So uh, let me see, that's what I have on that one. I'm gonna now go into what I think is one of the cooler parts of this. The view we have right now is by buckets, and I can add a new bucket. I've got my two buckets here. On our L10 meetings, you'll see we have four or five buckets. Again, jumping back in, I have this, and they're organized right now by buckets. But if you notice right up here on the top right, I've got group by. I'm gonna group it by assigned to. Now I can see everything that's unassigned. I can see what's assigned to me, what's assigned to Lisa. So for everybody that you have tasks assigned, that's how it would show up here. 
I can go ahead and group it by progress. It tells me what isn't started, what's in progress, what's been completed. By due date, so it shows me next week, no data signed. That's an easy way. So when you go through this view, it's a really easy way to find, especially if, if you've got a, a planner that's got 50 tasks, it might be really easy to miss that something's not been assigned or that something doesn't have a due date. This is a really easy way to do it because it'll show you anything that's unassigned or due date, you'll see what has no data signed. So in here, I could go ahead and pop in, add the due date, and I will do that. Let's go August just to see how that shows up. So I've got next week and I've got future. So I, I wasn't sure if it would say next week, next month, but I've got it in the future. So it breaks it down this way and then no date. So this is a really good way to find out if you've got a loose task that needs to have something assigned to it. You can also organize it by label. So these are what I need to do for my marketing, for my communication, for my operational. And again, keep in mind, this starts with buckets and you have tasks. It's really basic, but it, they give you a few more things that you can slice and dice by, by the labels, by the assigned, by the dates. So they're trying to keep it really, really simple. I don't know how many of you have ever tried to use Microsoft Project. Um, it's It's got a huge, huge learning curve. My guess is any one of you after this today could jump on and start using Planner quickly and easily and be able to teach it to your team because you got two things. You got buckets and you got tasks. You get that part down, then you teach them how to move inside of the task uh, card and what they can do inside of here to play with it what they can do to label it, assign it to somebody else, do the start date, put notes, add sub items. Um, I can add, again, you have to type something before you get a second one, you have to type the first, then you can get, then you get second and you can keep adding items that way. So they just make it really, really simple to be able to view things. So again, that's by labels, then I can go by priority. If everything's high important, nothing is important. So I could also just drag it this way. Now, again, I'm not changing anything. I'm just changing the importance. So when I go back to grouping by bucket, you'll notice, uh, let me see, exclamation points. We should have a few more exclamation points because I just dragged and dropped. Now you notice I didn't have to go click in every single card and change the importance. The easy way to do this is just sort by the priority and drag it over to how you want. And then I can make one urgent. Now, when I go back to the bucket, I've got everything easily assigned without having to go in each and every one and click through it. So this is, if you're gonna be moving things around, if, if you're starting out and let's say you've got 40 items, I'd say go in, grab it to create the basic cards, um, create the basic tasks of the cards as they're called. Once you've got those, then start slicing and dicing it. Go to assign two and just start grabbing. I know 10 of them need to be, be assigned to Michael. They'll all be here. And anybody that's part of the plan that has one assigned to them, the first one to get them to show up here, you have to pull somebody up. So I'm gonna go ahead and assign this to Jack instead of me. If you wanna take somebody off, just X them out. Now you'll notice Jack just showed up. So you do have to have them assigned to one item to have them show up in this view. But now I could just grab things around this way and assign things to people that way. Um, again, I can do that by the dates. The date, not quite as well, uh, but you can find out if you don't have dates assigned that way. But the point is use the filter, use the view to be able to easily move assignments, um, and change labels as you can change labels, assignments, and progress very easily, as well as labels that way as well. Any questions so far? Okay. Um, again, I'm going to go back. So I'm already in Planner. Uh, big thing again, my tasks. This is where you have everything. And again, I have the same ability. I can sort by plan, I can sort by progress. I can sort by my due date and I can sort by my priority. So that's an easy way for me to be able to see all of my tasks, 
across all of the different plans that I'm in. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven plans that I have tasks from. And then I'm going to go back over to progress. So this is not started completed. Um, it's a real easy way to see everything that I want to see in one glance. And again, these are kind of pre-built views that will let me see it in a different format. This is the easy way to change. Oh, let me uh, let me take that uh, because that I was saying it wasn't easy to change the dates. If we go back to tasks and to-dos, let's say that we needed to change dates. I was talking about how you can do it, due dates. But, and you can't change it that way. But if you go into the schedule, this is for that board. Again, you can change the dates this way quite simply. So that would be the way you could quickly and easily change that. Go back. Now you can see that they're all moved around this week, tomorrow, next week, and in the future. Okay. Any questions on that one? Okay. So how we interact with other applications. So again, in Teams, I started this one in Teams to begin with. And again, the caveat, make absolutely certain if you are going to build a planner and use it inside of a Teams channel, start it from within the Teams channel. Again, the way you do that, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. I'm going to go ahead and remove that. And it's going to ask me if I'm just wanting to remove it from this channel or do I want to permanently delete it. I'm going to go ahead and remove it from this channel. And I'm going to go over to webinar series. I'm going to add another plan. And remember where I said use an existing plan? There it is. So there's that sales planner. So if you want to move a plan between channels inside of Teams, that's how you would be able to do it on that. Now, again, remember the permissions can get a little bit wonky if you've got, when you create a team, if you remember back in the day when I, when I, was, when I did the first webinars on Teams, when you set it up, you have members of that team. By default, every channel you create underneath that team has the same permissions. You can change it, so that that permission, so let's say sales presentations only had two people out of five that could actually do that. If I created the channel, if I created the planner inside of this one that had much tighter permissions, I would not be able to move that up to the larger, to the other channel that had looser permissions. So just keep that in mind when you're when you're embedding planner inside of Teams, make sure that you're using the team that is going to need access, and if you need to move it around. It, if you needed to move it to a team that had slightly lower permissions, you could do it. You would probably want to involve us, though, because it, it can get a little bit, there's just permissions on the back ends that can make it a little wonky. Uh, I'm going to show you now on SharePoint. I'm going to go into my sales and marketing SharePoint. And you'll notice I have my planner tasks and to-dos. Now I want to show you two different things. I'm on the home page of my SharePoint. And what I did is I edited it, made an edit, and I created and said add a add a add the planner into this home page. So I took an existing plan that had already been created and said, pull it into this home page. I didn't start this one here. Again, this is my uh, the one that I created in here, Microsoft Tasks and To Dos. Uh, you notice the adding a new task and go back over to the SharePoint and we've got adding the new task. What I did is I just simply created and said on the home page, I want you to embed that plan on the home page. If I didn't want to do it that way, I could also just create a link, which is over here on the side. What that did is it launched me into, you notice that I left SharePoint and it brought me into the planner part of the Microsoft 365 ecosystem where we've been working before. That's where you can see all of your plans and it took me directly to that plan. So again, you can embed it, you can pull it into, let me go back to SharePoint again. 
SharePoint and my sales and marketing. So again, this was embedded on the home page. I've got my documents for this. I can go back to the home page and see the plan. But again, I took a plan that was already built and I just embedded it inside using what's called the web part. Um, SharePoint is a whole different beast on the building and the managing of it. I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole with you. Just know that that is possible to embed a plan into a SharePoint, you, you can kind of pull it in. It, what it does is it kind of pulls it in as a subsection inside. So it kind of wraps it, wraps it in a bubble and pulls it up for you to be able to show it off on the homepage like that. Um, so again, that's the difference between embedding it versus making it a hyperlink. In here, if I click in, you notice I can do things, but it's not taking me out of my SharePoint site. If I click here, that's actually a link to the planner website on the web. Any questions so far on that? So this is how you can pull it into SharePoint or pull it into Teams. Just remember, if you want it inside of Teams, start it and build it from within Teams. And again, a reminder on how you do that, you can go into any channel you want, do plus, do planner, and then give it a name. And then now you see here, post to the channel. I'll show you that in just a second. I'm gonna go ahead and save it. it. Takes me in here. But if I go back to my main tab here, that's the post that it just did, that I created a new plan. Click into the test. You notice that it brings down the sub menu. Um, so again, I've got a, a test menu. I've got a plan that I just created called test. Let me go back into the over here, my main planner, and notice that it just showed up here. Okay, so anytime you create a plan, you will be able to see it. If you have access to it, you'll be able to see the plan right here. Now, what if you wanna get rid of something? I'm gonna go back and get rid of this one. You'll notice that when I'm on the main page on the uh, posts, it's in here. I, I don't have any submenus here, but when I click on test, you'll notice I get a little pull down. And in here, I have the settings. That'll let me see if I wanted to change the name of it, but it'll also let me rename it or I'm removing it. Now, again, if I just click remove, that is not going to take it out of here because it's just removing the link from within Teams. If I wanna permanently delete it, I go ahead and hit the check mark, permanently de delete the plan, all of the tasks, do understand this data cannot be restored. That's a given. It, it, if you kill it, you kill it. That's just done. You go ahead and remove it, and you'll notice when I go back into my big plans here, let me refresh the page. Hmm, plan you're looking for isn't here. It knows that it went away. It's no longer a recent plan. That's why it's gone. So it's asking me when I click on, it's gone or deleted. Do you want to remove this? Yeah, go ahead and remove it. Now I'm Now it's out of that. Also in here, if I want to in here, uh, I had done the sales and marketing. This was one I had just tested. I can also delete it from da, 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 plan settings. I can go in and delete it from here as well. So again, there's a couple of different ways, but anytime you go to delete, so let me just make sure, got my sales and marketing. That's the one, yeah, that's the one I did just to play with. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into the uh, da, 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 plan settings, and I'm gonna go ahead and delete this plan. It's gonna say, hey, I understand this is gonna delete everything. Yep, go ahead and kill it. Bam, it's gone out of recent plans and it deletes it there. So any questions on deleting plans, renaming them, or accessing, accessing them through the different, uh, through Teams or through SharePoint or anything like that? Okay, that is the majority of what I wanted to show you. I'm gonna show you one other very quick thing just to kind of tease your appetite. This is, or whet your appetite. This is going to be a much uh, later webinar, but one of the things that I wanna show you is when we go into the Office 365 is something that's called Power Automate. It used to be called Flow. They've changed the name to Power Automate. And what it does is it allows you to automate tasks and 
behavioral and functions inside of various applications. They have a lot of templates and these are awesome. So I'm gonna search for the planner templates and these are all the things that can happen. So if I, so this one right here, create planner tasks for flagged emails in Office 365. So if I enabled that rule, if I flag something in my email box, it will automatically create a task. All you have to do is click into the template. And what you have to do is you have to give it the permission. So you have to have a check mark here. It's got to have a connection. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in here. Once I get the green check mark, then I can continue on. And then it takes me into the actual flow of how things work. So if an email is flagged, get my profile, create a task, and I can tell it the plan that I want it to go to. It'll pull up all the plans that I have access to. I can say which bucket, but first I have to choose. So let's say I'm going to choose the sales and marketing one that we've been working on, the Microsoft tasks and to-dos. The bucket, now what it just did is it went in search and said, okay, what buckets do you have? Remember I had the post and the post and the pre. I'll put it in that bucket. I can also do, so all I just did was a very simple thing that said, if I have something flagged in my email box, when I flag it, go ahead and create a task. I hit save, bam, boom, bam. This is gonna automatically do that workflow. I can also click in and get advanced options in here. So if it's from a particular person, if it's to a particular, if it's CC'd, if it's got a, now this particular importance, was set up um, so if I said it had to be flagged and it had to have a high importance, then it would only grab those. So you can kind of keep narrowing down the focus. You can say if it's flagged and it's got a particular word in the subject line. So let's say you have a ordering email. Something comes in and it's got a particular, it always comes in with a particular subject line. You could put that into the subject filter string, comes in, if it's got the right string and you flagged it, bam, then it could be set up and it would automatically create the task. I'm not going to click save here. I'm going to go back and again, I'm just going to show you very, very high level. Um, again, you go back into do the search and find out these are all the pre-built templates that you can do. Um, I can have it send me a daily digest of every outstanding planner task I have. Uh, planner tasks to Microsoft to do tasks so that those will be tied together. Um, I do not have that set up. That's actually a more recent one I haven't seen. I will probably enable that for myself. Um, what else? I mean, just look at all these different things. So send an email when a planner task is completed. Uh, create a new planner task when the email arrives. That could get a little bit scary. You don't want to create a new planner task on everything. But if you went into this one, again, you might do, uh, let's say that you are looking, so if your boss sends you or you've got somebody that sends you an email with a regular subject line, you could do it that way so that when you go in uh, to the template, you could click into the template. Again, new email arrives show me the folder options. You could say from this employee sent to me with an importance of high, and it's got to have that in the subject line. Then that workflow rule would create those tasks for you in Planner. So again, this is really, I don't want to go deep in this at all. Power Automate is, uh, we will eventually be hiring a full-time person. This is one of the ways that you can really extend the functionality of Office 365. I, if you notice here, this is pretty bare bones. This is pretty low. Uh, 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 most everybody that's on this call would be able to do this, but you can also get in into some pretty high level programming language. It brings in lots of other things. This is way, way over my head, which is why I'm not gonna dive into it with you here. Um, but this really extends the functionality. Again, uh, it's Power Automate. You go into My Flows, search for Planner, 
and you can find all these flows that are set up that are related to Planner. FYI, you can also do that for Outlook. There's all sorts of different things. This is how you can automatically save every email attachment into OneDrive. Uh, you can get a push notification when you get an email from your boss or from a particular person. Uh, there's lots of different things you can do in here. But what I wanted to point out is with Planner, there's all these pre-built templates that help extend the functionality of Planner based upon certain activities. And I mean, just look at this. Look at how long this goes on for. And you can even see more templates. It just keeps going on and on and on. There's really some amazing things that you can do in here. So uh, any questions? That was the overview that I wanted to give you about Planner. We'll go back and again, remember Planner Hub is where everything is stored. You can be a member of multiple plans. You can look at those plans individually. And you can also see when you go into your web for Planner from Microsoft 365, you can see all the plans that you're attached to. You can see all of the tasks that have been assigned to you through any of the plans. Any questions? Okay, it looks like no. I'll stay on for a few few more minutes. Um, again, uh, feel free to send me emails, reach out to me, let me know you'd like to kind of dig into this a little bit deeper. Um, our project team can work with this with you as well to help create um, ways that you could use Planner in your organization. Again, keep in mind you've got the buckets and you've got the cards, the ta the the task cards. Those are the two primary things. Um, once you get that down, then you start adding the other things into it. So if there is no other no other questions, then I'm going to go ahead and end this. This will be recorded. The next webinar is going to be in two weeks, and it's going to be on Microsoft uh, tasks and to-dos. If you notice, there will be some overlap. Um, I'll, I'll show you again all, all uh, using that um, Power Automate. I'm gonna go ahead and get that set up and be able to show you how to be able to do so that any planner that you have shows up in your Outlook tasks. Uh, if you go here, Microsoft To Do, uh, these are all of my to-dos, but my planner tasks do not show up on this to-do list, um, but they will by the uh, next webinar that we do. So with that, uh, thank you very much for attending. Next one is August 5th at 10 a.m. like always. This one will also be recorded and put up onto the website by early next week if you want to share it with anybody in your company. Thanks so much for attending. Bye-bye.